Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today I wanted to do an update video on my indoor growing experiments. Now I just released an indoor gardening video where I planted my seeds and one where I planted the seeds in my arrow gardens. But I do have to say that those videos were done about a month ago and they were just barely released as my last two videos. So there's been a lot of changes and I wanted to show you what's been happening in my grow room. So things have changed a little bit. We have our lettuce and our mesculine. We'll probably do a quick harvest on that today just to show you what it looks like. But this is what it looks like when I'm ready to harvest it. And I usually get three or four harvests like this out of each batch. And then I just start a new one. Here we have some tomatoes and cucumbers. I have some friends coming over to pick these up because they're extras. And here's some spinach. I had planted spinach a month ago. So I soaked these spinach seeds about six weeks ago, and then a month ago I put them in my arrow garden, and then I just put these aside, kept them a little wet, and they have not sprouted until yesterday. And they finally sprouted. It's taken six weeks to get them to sprout. I'd actually given up on them. This right here is one of my purple ruffles basil. It was one of the two seeds that sprouted out of the arrow garden, and so I pulled it out of the arrow garden and put one of them in here. These are the tomato seedlings that I'm gonna up pot and some pepper seedlings that I'll up pot in a little bit. Uh, I'll probably give them another week or so before I up pot them. These are my roselle cuttings. They've rooted, they're looking beautiful, and I will up pot those in about a month. I'm gonna let those, I'm gonna let the roots get pretty well established in here. Here's my onions that have kept growing. We did find some dill seed and planted those. And in the back, we've got radishes. Let's, I don't think they're forming bulbs right now. Can't really see very well in there. Um, they seem to have rooted very shallowly and they're not thickening up like I'd like them to. I may need to look and see what I need to do differently. But they're healthy looking plants. Cucumbers are nice and big. These are ones that I'm giving to somebody else. And these are ones that I up potted already for myself. Now, I actually created a trellis in the back. I've just hooked it, hooked it to the side of my grow rack. And this is just a net to use as a trellis. So we'll see how well these cucumbers do. I'm really excited because they're looking really healthy so far. This is my Devo. It's only taken a month to have the Thai basil and the purple ruffles basil come up. Spinach was looking like it was missing some nutrients, so I upped the nutrients in this one a little bit, and I'll show you, and I'll show you what I use in my hydroponics units. The carnival tomatoes have come up and they're looking good too. Now these are a little bit behind. I guess they're only a couple of days behind my other tomatoes. They seem to be growing just a little tiny bit slower. So here's my chard and my kale. I've done a couple of harvests off of these. The chard and the chiji misai, I think had thrips so I ha and white fly also. So I had to take some of the chiji misai out and I've sprayed and removed a lot of the leaves off of my chard. So I'm hoping that that has helped that. I think I pretty much have the, the aphid infestation under control but we're watching and waiting and seeing because sometimes the aphids will just pop up. So I'm, I'm hoping those, I'm hoping that has been taken care of. So what I've done is I just find the aphid infested leaves, I pull them off, and then I spray the rest of the plant with horticultural soap. We've had flowers blooming on my peppers. I've been shaking the pepper plant a couple of times a day to see if we can get it to set some fruit. There's an older flower right there. It's looking really healthy. And I've been fertilizing this with the Maxi Grow and the Maxi Bloom. And I will show you all of those in just a minute. Now here's another project that I've been doing that I'm going to show you, a couple of more projects that I've been doing that I'm gonna show you in a different video. But I have been trying to root some figs. I purchased some cuttings and my next video is going to show you how, I'm, how I've been rooting those cuttings. I also received some, a mushroom kit from my daughter. It's been really fun. My daughter is finally, you know, she's 
in her mid-20s and has finally decided she loves to garden and she's been taking up indoor gardening too. So she has been experimenting with mushrooms and I did get my first harvest. If I get a second harvest out of this, I will show you that. So these are the fertilizers that I've been using. I love Osmocote. Now there's several different varieties of Osmocote. I think any of them work as well as the others. Just look at the fertilizer numbers on the side and see which ones you need. This one's just a basic 14, 14, 14. So it does, and it has a lot of micronutrients. So I mix this into the potting soil when I create the potting mix. And it lasts, depending on the variety that you have, between three and six months. And it, most of the time, this is plenty of fertilizer for your plants. Now, if my plants start slowing in growth or if they show any nutrient deficiencies, I will add Maxi Grow and Maxi Bloom. And I've showed this in other videos, but I really like to mix these at half rate. And they really, really help my plants. This is the best fertilizer I found for citrus. And I will add some other fertilizers to my citrus to keep them healthy. And I will show you those in a different video. But these work really well. The Maxi Bloom helps with the fruiting and the flowering and the Maxi Grow helps keep the nitrogen levels at a good level. Now this is what I use in my hydroponics unit. Now it's a good fertilizer for the potted plants too. The only issue is this one is really expensive. So I like to keep it for my hydroponics units. So this is just the basic Aero Garden fertilizer and it's the simplest, easiest way to go. It tells you exactly how much fertilizer to use on the instructions for the size of unit that you have. And uh, it tells you in milliliters and I have a cup that shows that has milliliters in it. So there's no converting whatsoever. It just tells you exactly what to use. Now these are a powder. They can be used in the hydroponics units and I've, been, and I've used it there before. It's just a little more difficult for me to convert and maybe it's just that my brain doesn't work well enough, but it's really difficult for me to convert how much of the mixture I should use in the hydroponic units. Previously, I just mixed it for, the, for a gallon and then would refill my hydroponic units as needed with that mixture. And that also seemed to work really well. So this is another good one that's a little bit cheaper that you can use in your hydroponic units. So now that we've given you an update on what's growing in my grow room, let's harvest my lettuce and show you how much I can get just off of these. Now, these are growing on a wicking mat. I'll bring you in a little bit closer and show you what a wicking mat looks like. But it's getting con consistent water and you can see, I don't know, and I don't know if you can see the roots that come out at the bottom, but the roots spread out all over the wicking mat and it keeps my plants really, really healthy. And all I need to do is fill up this tray when the water runs out. And this seems to be the easiest way for me to grow cut and come again lettuce that I can harvest and use indoors. And on this tray, I have 12 four inch pots. So if you want to see which lettuce seeds I chose before, I will link a video up at the top and show you what kind of lettuce I'm growing. So let's get harvesting. So to harvest, I just cut them all off at the base. So this is what the lettuce looks like after I cut it. And in about a week, it'll be ready to cut again. And this is the amount of lettuce that I got off of those 12 pots. And this will last me for about a week. So if I replant lettuce like once a month, you know, just have two different trays of lettuce going, you know, I'll start the next tray of lettuce about the second or third cutting on this tray and then it'll be ready by the time this one is done. So then I will be able to start this one again. And I can have a continuous supply of lettuce all throughout the season. And it is absolutely delicious. Now we're not done here. We've got a few more things that we can harvest and put into my salad. Let's harvest some more. So now we actually have some dill that we can harvest. I love dill in my salad. So let's harvest some of that. Now we're not going to cut this to the ground. We're just going to harvest some off the top. Now the growth point, there is a growth point down here where you can see the new leaves coming out. Don't cut below that. You don't want to remove that point. Otherwise it'll not grow back. So we'll just remove some of the leaves off the top. 
and then cut those into my salad. Last of all, we'll cut off some green onions. Now these will also continuously grow throughout the season, as long as you don't remove the growth point. And I don't know if, I don't know if you can see it, but the growth point is right around here. So we're just going to remove some of the outside leaves, some of the bigger ones. So the onions will continue to grow and let's just chop some of these up into my salad. So there we have a homegrown salad and in a couple of months, we're gonna be able to start adding tomatoes and cucumbers too. So I'm really excited about that. It is that easy to be able to grow food indoors over the winter. Now this is November. Our growing season outdoors is definitely over, but it's gonna be more and more fun as the year goes on. So if I can have tomatoes, cucumbers, salad greens, kale that I'm harvesting indoors in January, that is, and I'm not even gonna ever have to go outside in the cold to do any of it. That is going to be a lot of fun. So I would like to challenge you to try and plant something indoors. You can actually plant herbs in pots and put them in your kitchen near a sunny window. You don't need to have the same setup that I do. It is really easy to do. All you need to do is make sure to watch the watering and make sure your plants have the nutrients that they need. I fertilize my plants about every other week with the liquid fertilizer. I add the Osmocote at planting time and then I make sure I water them only when the plants have completely dried out. When the pot has gotten light and the soil is dry, before the plants have started to wilt, I will add water. Now you're gonna to need to experiment a little bit on your own, but too much water kills plants faster than too little water. So kind of watch your plants really carefully, see where, how the pot, how much the pot weighs just before the plants start to wilt. And then uh, you'll know when is the best time to water and how long it takes. Normally mine are only watered once a week on Sundays until they get a bit larger. And then I usually only have to water them twice a week. And that is unless I'm using the wicking mats. The wicking mats, I just keep the water basin full and they take the amount of water that they need. So that is it. This is how you grow food in your indoors over the winter. And I would love to hear what you're doing. So if my videos are helpful to you, please like, subscribe, share them with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.